Hello, Simon Friley here, back with the Clinical Neurophysiology channel. Someone asked me from within the neurology and neurophysiology community a very important question, and I thought the best way to answer that would be to do a video, because it's got quite a few different points to it. So the question is, how do you ensure a good quality recording with a nice flat baseline um, electrically uh, for when you're doing your studies? So a couple of uh, tips and tricks. Here with that, there's a very excellent uh, lecture that Dr. Sanjeev Nandakar does from Natus. It goes into all this in, in a lot of detail, uh, but here's a, just a, a brief summary from my perspective. First thing is, whatever bed that or couch that the patient is sitting on or lying on, uh, it has to be unplugged from the wall. You've got to literally unplug it from any electrical um, source. It can't just be switched off, it has to be unplugged. That's really important. Number two, um, you don't really know what's going on in the walls around the beds. And so the best thing to do really is just to pull the bed back by a foot and that can really make things nice and toasty for you and remove a lot of electrical um, interference. Number three, um, use really good quality um, electrodes. A lot of people end up using uh, these sort of cardiology, uh, crocodile clip type electrodes. In my personal opinion and experience, they are not as good quality as more dedicated neurophysiology uh, style um, electrodes. Um, these are the ones that, that I happen to use. Um, they've got a nice uh, recording surface area, but what I do is I knot the cabling um, in th usually about three places. It keeps all the wires together and it avoids any antenna effects of sucking in electrical interference from the ether. The next thing you'll notice that is plugged in, these touch proofs are plugged into a DIN switch converter, um, like so. There are two advantages to this. Number one, you get extra shielding over here, particularly around the point where it's um, going in near towards the electrical stimulating cables. So that's one advantage. But number two, it just protects your equipment because you're not constantly putting in these touch proofs um, into the small pins over there. You bend one of those pins, that's a problem. You bend a pin in here, big deal, you just switch it out. So that's a, that's a useful tip. Um, the next thing to say is obviously skin quality. Um, if the skin is too dry or if it is too moist, there are problems. So you've got to make sure that the skin is sufficiently uh, clean, so there can't be any dry skin, debris on there, grease, oils, whatever it is that patients come in with. Um, but also if patients have got hyperhidrosis or if they're just generally anxious or sweaty, um, that will cause all sorts of horrible um, stimulation artifacts that crop into your um, sensory responses and that's a problem too. So those are some, some pretty important things. The thing that you can't really change very easily is your machinery. Um, some machinery are better than others um, in terms of flat baselines. Um, I absolutely love my Damed equipment. Um, I've talked about this endlessly, um, but basically um, the amplifiers are attached to the machine via fiber optic cable, which means that they are electrically isolated from the system, which just improves the quality of what you are recording. Um, I'm a massive fan of the portable system, particularly getting to visit an ITU um, type patients. And I joke about this, but you know, there, there's a point to this. You don't need to unplug your patients to get good results. Um, a lot of the time there are lots of machines around patients uh, that create a lot of electrical fields um, and adverse recording conditions. This equipment is just built for that. Um, and you get some really wonderful sensory responses, even you know, when you've got Flowtrons and all of that going on. Um, you know, you can get you just get great responses um, when they are present. And you can rely on that, you know, if they're not as well. Um, final thing to say just on, on that subject, sometimes you do need to move the equipment away from Floatron type devices and, and so on. You just have to move it back by a foot or so. Um, this particular um, equipment comes with fiber optic extension cables too, if you want to do that. Um, but th you know, that, that's another point to consider as well. Finally, um, I just mentioned as well that some equipment has got an isometric function where they'll put a mathematical solution in to sort of flatten the baseline. Um, this one will do that, um, others don't do that, um, but that can be a tool as well. I hope that's been helpful and answered the question and um, hopefully when time allows, um, I will be making some more regular content. All the very best.